and welcome in to another day of your daily devo. I'm Pastor Rick, and we are in the book of Galatians, written by the Apostle Paul. We're in chapter 3 today, and we're jumping into this whole concept of justification through faith. And, man, how sometimes we fight against this concept because it seems a little too good to be true, or we're scared we're scared of ourselves, I think, sometimes because we think, man, if we really believed, you know, that the gospel is as good as the gospel is, then then I'll, I won't live a righteous life, you know. Because so many people live a righteous life or a, you know, quote unquote, righteous life because they're, they think that their salvation is tied to whether or not they are living righteously, like depending on how they are doing. And so then they live better because they are afraid, they're nervous, they're, you know, that they got to do the right things in order to be able to receive and then continue to accept and maintain their salvation. But Paul seems to have a little bit of a different perspective. So we're going to jump in here. We're going to see what he says. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it a little bit. So Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. You foolish Galatians, who has cast a spell on you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. So who's cast a spell on you? Who's, Who's hypnotized you? And you're the people that saw Jesus publicly portrayed as crucified. Like you saw him on the cross. I only want to learn this from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Like what was the original, what was the original source of your salvation? How, when, when the spirit came to indwell in you, when the spirit came to indwell in you, was it, re- was it a result of you masterfully keeping the law? Or did you believe what God said and confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead? Which was it? So, Are you so foolish? Verse 3. Are you so foolish after beginning by the Spirit you are now finishing by the flesh? Did you experience so much for nothing? If in fact it was for nothing. So then, does God give you the Spirit and work miracles among you by your doing the works of the law? Or is it by believing what you heard? So here we have again, the works of the law versus believing what you heard. Just like Abraham who believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. Now, it doesn't mean that I just believe that you you get saved and you can, can continue to do whatever you want. Because that doesn't make sense, right? But I've often said that the gospel properly preached often sounds like a license to sin because... Because the gospel is so unbelievable, it's so full, so thorough, so like, wow, so far reaching that when you properly preach the gospel, it literally sounds like, wow, God's basically giving you a license to sin. And this is where I was going with the thought about, this is where I was going with the thought about how people are scared, I think, to believe the fullness of the gospel, or they're concerned about what that's going to mean for being able to tell if somebody else is a believer, because isn't that part of it? Like we look at other people and we're like, man, you say you're a Christian, but there's nothing lining up with what you say you believe. And I hear you and I hear you. And that's, and that could be a little bit of a struggle, quite honestly, right? Because it's by their fruit that you should know them. And so while I would say that you are not justified by righteous acts, by, by doing 
all the right things. We've talked multiple times in our daily devos that we've been doing as we went through Psalms and Proverbs that there's definitely blessing for living a life of obedience. So, so it's like certainly there's blessing when you do the things God says you should do. So ultimately, we're not talking about actions. We're talking about where your heart's at and what what you believe actually is the cause of your salvation. And then the results of that belief, right? Because that's the really big thing is what you believe is like way up at the top. And then everything else in your life kind of cascades from that. Because what you believe then determines how you think and then how you think then determines your actions and then that that starts all kinds of different things based on how you act so part of it is because a lot of times people believe that coming to christ you know your initial salvation experience yes that is an act of god's grace through faith no one you know not of works so no one can boast but then You go into the next topic of sanctification. So we believe you get saved and then God is going to continue to grow you in holiness and righteousness, becoming more like him, growing in your character. Well, obviously, that's just hard work, period. You just got to you just got to get to it. You know, you got to you got to grit and will yourself to win. But I, I believe, actually, that the same grace that got you to the point of salvation is the same grace that's going to carry you. So the same grace that brought you to the cross is going to carry you from the cross towards eternity. So it should mean that it's possible for somebody that is a works based salvation and righteousness person and a genuinely saved by the grace and power of God, it's very possible that their lives could look somewhat similar. Because, because when you are filled with the spirit of God and the spirit of God is transforming you, you act different. You start serving and loving and caring and going the extra mile because of what God is doing in your life, because he's transforming the way that you think and how you operate. He like, he's changing you into a different person. But if you believe that works are the way that you get saved and stay saved, you could be doing a lot of work, a lot of good work. And so you could look, You could appear as if you have been transformed. However, one of the main things that's going to be missing in this journey, one is at some point you're probably just going to quit because you don't have that much willpower. You don't have that much strength. But number two, you're going to definitely lack some peace. You're going to lack some assurance. Because if my salvation is based on my performance, yikes. You know, it's like, please stop watching this channel forever. Because if, if my salvation, if, if anything good in me depends solely on me, yikes. And that's all I have to say about that. Yikes. So that's where I am thankful for the fact that my salvation is, is not built on me. It's built on Christ and he's perfect and he's faithful and he's great. He's righteous and holy. So he's dependable. He doesn't change yesterday, today, forever, always the same. So I don't have to doubt. I don't have to fear. I don't have to wake up every morning and give my life to Christ again in the sense of like getting saved. I do kind of believe in a daily like re-surrendering your heart to the Lord. Mostly because I need to remind myself daily who I belong to whose I am because I've been bought with a price Man, first Corinthians talks about that so much like you have been bought with a price you are not your own 
And so for me, daily surrendering my life to Christ is not so much a matter of getting saved again, but it's reminding myself who I belong to and what I need to be about. Like, you know, refreshing, hitting the refresh button on all of my priorities, everything I need to be doing. So were you saved by what you believed or what you were what you were doing, your actions, your works. So let's go down to verse 7. You know then that those who have faith, these are Abraham's sons. Now the scripture saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and proclaimed the gospel ahead of time to Abraham saying, All, all the nations will be blessed through you. Come on now. So the Gentiles getting saved was not some crazy plan B because Israel didn't do what they were supposed to do. No, like it was all in the plan. Consequently, those who have faith are blessed with Abraham who had faith. So here he's really blurring the lines between the Gentiles and the Jews saying, you know, in Christ, there's no Jew or Gentile. There's no male or female. There's no like all these things. There's no dividing lines. It's just in Christ or not in Christ. It's pretty awesome. Now, Scripture saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. And what is faith? Well, so here, uh, obviously, faith is the evidence of things hoped for and the substance of things not seen. It's also impossible to please God if you don't have faith. So my operating definition of faith is acting in such a way as if acting basically okay let me let me try again acting as if you believe that what god says is true acting as if you believe that what god says is true if i have faith in something i am trusting in it i'm believing it and the way that i prove that i genuinely believe it is by acting according to what that truth then means Take, for example, if you were in a situation and somebody held a gun to you and you did not believe that it was a real gun, you would act as if it were not a real gun. You wouldn't respect the situation the way that you would if you did believe it was a real gun. So if somebody held the gun at you and said, freeze, stick them up, you know, like, don't move. And you don't believe what they you don't believe that it's a real gun you don't believe that all that stuff is true you're going to do whatever you want you're going to you know as you were man as you were and you're going to you're going to behave however you want because you don't believe that what they're saying is true now if you believe that what they say is true then you're going to behave differently because of you believe that the words that they are telling you are true, that I have a gun and if you move, I'm going to shoot or whatever, you know, then, then you go, Oh gosh, uh, I need to change. I need, I need to allow my behavior to reflect what I believe about this situation. And so please don't misunderstand. No, I'm not saying God has a gun to, you know, no, not at all, but great, great example in the sense of like what you believe impacts what you do and so what what do we believe about god and who he is and what do what do we believe about god and who he is and how is that going to impact um, our behavior so ask yourself or just observe yourself <laughs> have some have some devos you know have some devos and ask yourself, what am I doing uh, in response to God's grace in my life? How am I behaving? Am I behaving as if I believe that what God says is true? With that, God bless you today. Have an amazing day and I'll see you tomorrow.